guys, welcome back to the shop. So in this video is the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to reveal what engine I'm hoping to use on this car I'm building here. You guys been, have been leaving a lot of comments throughout the video of what engines you think I should use and what your guesses are. But I just picked up this bad boy a few days ago. As you can see, this is a Ford Flathead V8. This is the 59AB model. This is the second to last model of Flathead V8 Ford made. They made this from 1946 to 48. As you can see, that it is missing a lot of external parts here. No carburetor or any of the stuff that goes up here like the water pumps or alternators, stuff like that. But this engine was actually given to me very generously by a friend of a friend in, in hopes that I could use it for um, my project here and as you can see I've already taken off one of the heads and it is surprisingly clean inside there there's virtually no rust and also virtually no carbon buildup either which is surprising to me you can see here's the head over there it's very clean which I would like to see and on the outside like it, it there's some surface rust over the whole thing but none, nothing too bad at all like I didn't have trouble with any of these these nuts coming out so what I'm going to do is um, start disassembling this. What you have to do for these blocks is check for cracks because they're all cracked. It depends on where they're cracked. Like if it's cracked from say like this coolant passage to the head bolt, that doesn't really matter. But if it's cracked from the valve seat to the cylinder, um, that's a much bigger issue. So what you actually have to do to test for the cracks here is magnaflux it which is where you put a magnetic powder on there and take an electromagnet and put that over it and that'll highlight any cracks you have running in there but for now I'm just going to try to disassemble this and do the best visual inspection um, as I can so I'm going to get the other head off uh, I'll get this intake manifold off and we'll go from there Alright, so I got some more of this taken apart here. So you can see this side of the cylinders here and inside of underneath the intake here is just as clean, which is really nice to see. There's there's pretty much no rust at all inside of there, which is a very, very good sign. So what I'm gonna do now is pretty much just continue with this. I'm going to drain the oil since this thing is still still full of oil here, as you can see. So I'll drain that, get the oil pan out, and then probably try to drop the crankshaft and then get all of the rest of that, the internals out.
All right, so I've been making some good progress disassembling this here. Got all the pistons laid out here, and as I mentioned before, this is the 59AB flathead. This is that's the second to last model flathead V8 Ford made. Um, the model after this was called the 8BA, and if you look at these pistons here, I mean these rods, they're all marked 8BA. So at some point, someone swapped out some of the internals from an 8BA and put it into this block. I did some research and I found out that the difference in rods between the 8BA and then and the 59AB are are the bearings that these have. These have the individual like kind of clip-in bearings there. The 59 had um, what's called full floating bearings where they had just one bearing for each journal and then the the bearings would rotate on the crankshaft and the and the rods here. So having it like this makes it a lot easier to work with, which is um, very convenient, and because the bearings are different, um, you can't you can't crisscross the rods and the crankshaft. So the crankshaft I have over here also must be from an 8BA, which is which is pretty cool. I think I don't think there's any real advantage to it. Um, it is a Ford crankshaft. It's not the Mercury version. The Mercury version of the 8BA um, has a slightly longer stroke, but this is this is the exact same thing basically. Just those bearings are a little bit easier to work with. The other interesting thing is that this cam, this cam gear right here is aluminum um, and that is definitely an aftermarket part because those were not aluminum from the fact they were like a nylon material um, gear there. So anyways I have this engine here back turned right side up now. I'm going to now take out the valves and this is one of the more tricky parts to work with. So uh, let me show you how I'm, I plan to do this. Okay, so inside the valve assemblies um, look pretty much like this, and there's a couple ways of taking them out. There's this little clip that goes on top there, that's right up against the block, and if you can, the best way to do it is to hook this little hole right there and pull that out, and then you can slide this whole thing out. Um, so what I can do for that is I have this file here, and I'm just using the base of this here, and I can kind of reach in there and hook onto that little hole and then pull that clip out. And then after you do that, you can take some sort of some sort of pry bar. I just have a piece of angle iron here and you kind of reach this in and position it at the very base of of the valve assembly and just pry it up and then that whole thing slides right out. A lot of times, however, what will happen is this part of the valve guide will be stuck inside inside of the valve area there. So if that's the case, you have to take this apart um, piece by piece. So the first thing you have to do is take out these the little two keepers that sit at the base of the valve stem. And what you can do for that is you get your piece, you get your pry bar there, and you hook it just outside of those little keepers on this other little lip there. And then that will that will pry the valve up, and then you get a hammer and very gently tap the valve there to get it to go back down in, like that. And then you can get some little pick there to kind of get those little keepers out. And I just. You got to be careful with those two, or else you'll, or because you could, there's some little holes back here that you they can fall down um, into the oil pan, like one of them just did. But that's fine. I can get it later. After you get those keepers out, then this valve will should slide right out here. After that, then what I'll do is take just a little wood piece like this and hammer that valve guide back through the block. This one here actually had some rust in it so um, that's pretty pretty well seized in there but you get the idea that you just pound that out that comes out then you can get the spring out and then the valve lifter also lifts up after you can get all that stuff out. So I'm going to go through this and get as many out as I can and then I'll, I'll get back to you. Alright, so as you can see here now, I got all of the valves out. 
only a couple of them came out really easily like that first one did. Um, the intake valves did get a little bit of water in them over the years so they, they're a little bit rusty in there and it made it harder to get those out but they all came out. I have everything laid out over here nice and neat. So that's all pretty good. I also got the camshaft out here. It's sitting right there. So this thing is pretty much completely disassembled here. It wasn't that difficult. Um, this one was in better shape, much better shape than most um, for being 70 years old. So that, that came out really nicely. The next thing I have to do for this is um, clean it up really well and then inspect the block um, for cracks by magnafluxing it. Um, I'm not sure if that will be the next video or if it'll be something else on the car. Um, I'll see. But anyways, that's pretty much all I have for you for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.